the top. Good morning, church. Good morning. Come on, we can do better than that. Good morning, church. Good morning. Lord, this is another day that the Lord has made, and we're going to do what? We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. yes, Michelle, you're right, girl. Your boy has been chomping at the bit. Because y'all know I love the word. Y'all know I love to preach the word. It's just, it's just my, that's just my thing. Everybody got their thing, and this is my thing. You know what I'm saying? And I give God the glory for it. Um, you know, I was telling the, the, the brothers uh, this morning, you know, uh, let me just kind of set it straight. You know, when we see people up here teaching and preaching and, and giving the word no matter who it is, yeah, uh, no matter who it is, uh, you got to realize, you know, at least I can speak for myself and I think for the others as well, you have to realize that this, this word don't come easy when you're, when, you're, when you're searching out a real word, a now word, a right on time word. Because, because we all need a word, amen? amen? A word in due season, and we all have those due seasons when we just need a word. So, 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 so if, if the man or the woman of God isn't seeking out the face of God, then you're not going to get the word. Right. See, 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 we need a rhema word, amen? We need something that's going to transform and change our lives, amen. And that's, and that's the blessedness of having the gospel, amen. That's the blessedness of, of having the honor and the privilege to be able to teach and preach the word. But, you know, it just does not come just because we open up the Bible and say, hit me, you know. There is a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, especially when it comes to spiritual warfare. And sometimes you just got the dog, the dog on devil out until you make sure you get that word and you get the truth. And, and I tell you, it has just been, uh, you know, a very uh, fist fighting, <laughs> kung fu chopping, <laughs> throwing blows and sucker punches all week long but now we're here God has a prepared word for us amen and, and and not just you know not just the ones that got to bring it but just all of us because you know we're in these last days we're in the last of the last days amen and it is critical just like I told the brothers this morning it is critical that if there's mass darkness going on then it's time for the light to be prominent in this in this hour amen because the Bible says darkness will increase. It's increasing in our schools, it's increasing in our government, it's increasing everywhere we look, darkness is increasing. But this is the opportunity for God's people to shine. This is the opportunity for us to rise up and be the people of God and who God has called us to be, amen? Come on now, amen? Okay, 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 okay. And I think that the world is expecting it. The world is expecting and waiting for the sons and the daughters of God to rise up. Didn't we talk about that this morning, Papa? You know? And if we're not operating and if we're not rising up in these kingdom principles and allowing the word of God to change and transform our lives so that the power of God can flow through us. And I'm just not talking ordinary power. I'm talking supernatural power. Just imagine. Just like that, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just imagine going through your whole Christian life. And Jesus said this. This is just prepping. The, I'm just priming the pump here. Jesus said, watch this. He said, greater works that yes. you should do than me. Amen. Now let's think about all the things that Jesus done. He raised the dead. That's right. He opened up the blind eyes. He made the mute to speak. Those that had leprosy was cleansed. And he said, and you're supposed to be doing more than this. That's so now you got to check in your heart, are you doing more than what Jesus had done? Or have we just relegated church to our church culture? And then we done settle all nice and snug in our Christian culture while the whole world was going to hell. Because you got to fit in where you get in and you just got to snuggle in that thing. 
and relax in that thing and never experience or operate in the supernatural power of God, which is your right. Amen. Come on now. Is that right or wrong? And so there is, and then watch this, and I, and I know I'm kind of reflecting on this morning, but this was leading up to it. And then, and then the man or the woman of God gets up here, and then they preach the word, and they teach the word, and just like I said this morning, and then the people of God want to get an attitude with the word of God. But yet in the same next sentence, you're talking about you want the supernatural power of God, but then you're getting an attitude with the word of God. Because you, you can get mad at me all you want, but the truth is the truth. And I know that it's the truth that's going to set you free. And if we're supposed to be light, but we're continuing to operate in the principles of darkness, then how can light and dark mix? I'm going to sit on that one. And what effect is dark? Thank you, Holy Ghost. And what effect is darkness going to have on darkness? You just in the dark with everybody else. And we're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to be the truth. Amen? Amen. Not that we're the truth, but we're supposed to represent the truth. Amen? And we're supposed to represent the way, the kingdom way. Amen? The kingdom truth. Amen? And that's only going to happen when we continue to submit our lives unto the glory of God and allow the glory of God to come in us and flow through us. And it's not always an easy task. It's not easy, is it? Because we always are in this wrestling match. Amen. Because, you know, I want to do the right thing, Paul says, but sometimes I end up doing the, the wrong thing. But we can't just relegate it, well, oh, well, you know, I'm just, I just did the wrong thing, you know, well. No, there should, there, there should be some type of a, 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 a conviction yeah. that says, look, you're not doing right. And then when the Spirit says that we're not operating in right kinds of principles, then what we ought to be doing is saying, okay, Lord, then just tell me what to do so that I can make sure that I'm walking the right road. Amen. And I think that our desires and our mindset will change when we get a better view of grace. My, my shirt? Oh, okay. Thank you, baby. You know what? <laughs> I know I should have did this anyways. Excuse me, y'all. Not like trying to be like that. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop, because Lisa always harping on me about that all the time. So, okay, 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 okay. So everybody say grace. grace. Okay, so now, you know, and, and we've heard, um, te- there's so many Greek teachers out there that are teaching on the principle of grace. I know uh, Joseph Prince and Creflo Dollar, and they got a lot of these cats out there talking about grace. Thank you, Rick. And, uh, and we can just leave it right there, please. But uh, I, I hope that the principles that I teach about this morning will give us a different perspective on grace. Because I believe, again, once we really begin, to, and, and I mean, God is just kind of just waking some things even with me as I had to do this study uh, about, you know, how, how amazing, and we always say this, how amazing grace really, truly is. Because where would we be without God's grace? Amen. So let's first talk about a couple of definitions. First of all, grace is the unmerited love and mercy of God towards mankind. Okay. And I don't know who else is taking notes, but I'm going to try to pace myself. Grace is also the divine influence acting in a person to make that person pure and morally strong. That's a powerful, powerful definition. Amen. Watch this. It's also the condition of a person brought to God's favor through God's influence. It's also a special virtue, gift, or help given to a person by God. Now, we always relegate God's grace to love 
and mercy. And sometimes we just keep it there. Well, the grace of God is just God's love and mercy. And yes, that is. But love and mercy, they operate inside the whole mechanics of grace. Does that make sense? Y'all getting it, right? Okay, so now, so now, as we think about that, let me read this definition to you, and then you just kind of chew on this about the definition of grace. Now, this definition was given by Mr. Lewis Sperry Schaefer. Listen to this. Grace is what God may be free to do, and indeed what he does, according for the lost after Christ, he has died on behalf of them. You know, sometimes they kick that old English, you know. But anyways, so, so, so the bottom line is, grace is whatever God wants to do, he's going to do. Amen? Is that right? Yes. Okay, now watch this. Now, we always want to relegate grace just to mercy and love. But watch this. He goes on to say that it's apparent that God's grace is to be distinguished from his mercy and his love, okay? Mercy is therefore the compassion of God that moved him to provide a savior for the unsaved. Y'all get that? Do I need to repeat that? No? Okay, okay, now watch this. And then now let's talk about what love is, okay? And sometimes, okay, excuse me. Okay, and then love on the other hand, God's divine love, is the motivating plan behind all that God does in saving a soul. So y'all see the difference there. So one is distinguished from the other. Mercy is the compassion of God, but love is the motivation behind. Y'all got it? Okay, okay, okay. Now watch this, now watch this. But since God is holy and since God is righteous, and sin is a complete offense to him, his love and his mercy, watch this, cannot operate in grace until there is a provided satisfaction for sin. So, so, so you have the big picture here, you have grace, and inside grace is that love and mercy. And because now, you know, and we understand this because we're all sinners, there has to be some type of satisfaction for that sin because love and mercy will not operate unless something is satisfied when it comes to your sin. See, see, that's why, watch this now, watch, get this now, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying not to be too preachy, I want to be a little bit more teachy this morning, but watch this. See, that's why it is so critical the way we live our Christian lives. Because, yeah, overall, Jesus took care of the big sin on the cross, amen, but it's that little stuff that gets in the way, and then, and then we say, oh, well, I'm standing in God's grace. Well, yeah, maybe in the big picture... But then when it comes to the cognitive parts of the grace and mercy, when it comes to love and mercy, when it comes to the cognition of grace, are we really operating in it? Because how can I operate it, operate in that if, like the thing says right here, if there's not a satisfaction for our sin? Remember, the big picture is the sin has been taken care of, but that don't mean that I still can't sin. And if I'm operating in sin, then how is love and mercy going to operate within this grace? How can I experience that if I'm continuing to operate in something that's not satisfying the grace? Is this making sense? Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So everybody, so everybody with me. I don't, want to, I don't want to rush through this. I really want to try to take my time, okay? Now watch this. Now I like this part. Now... This satisfaction, now, now oh, let's look at big picture. This satisfaction makes it possible for God to exercise. Everybody say exercise. When sin is satisfied, it makes it possible to, for God to exercise grace. Or in other words, watch this. It makes it possible for God to flex a little bit. Show off his guns a little bit. Oh, you think you bad sin? You think you're a conqueror sin? You think you got them beat down sin? Well, let me just flex on you a little bit. Mm. 
Oh, you don't want me to pull out. God said, oh, you don't want me to pull out the big guns, devil. But if I got to, I will. And I'll flex up on you. And you just got to go. Okay? Now, see, that's God's part. Now, what about your part? So how are you flexing? How are you exercising God's grace in your life? And, 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 and if we're not living accordingly, then, then how are we satisfying that? Because, you know, we always say, you know, well, come to the altar, the altar is open. But you know what? And I mean, yeah, I'm not, and let me not thank you, Lord. I don't want to be dogmatic. It's not that you can't sit in your seat and repent. You can, do, you can do that. I mean, you know, pastor's not frowning on that type of thing. But, you know, but it's the altar sometimes where the same altar, like when Jesus was sacrificed on the altar for our sin, sometimes we just need to show God, okay, Lord, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to sit here in my pride. I'm not going to sit here on my death. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get up and I'm going to go and I'm going to meet you at the altar. And I'm going to confess and I'm going to repent and we're going to get this thing right. So, so, so while you're flexing, I'm flexing, we're flexing together and we're going to show the devil and we're going to show sin that you have no rule or no reign over us. Hallelujah. Come on. Give God a hand clap. Amen. Okay. So somebody say grace. grace. Come on. Somebody say grace. grace. See See, and the beauty of this, guys, listen to this. Grace rules out all human merit. Oh, I'm trying to be holy. I'm trying to be holy. Oh, I'm trying to be sanctified. I'm trying to be... Sa you ain't got nothing. In the bigger picture, you have nothing to do with that. That is what God instituted, amen? Amen. And you got to let that settled in, be a settled fact in your mind and in your heart when it comes to God's grace. See, God doesn't, well, thank you, Lord. See, God doesn't involve human merit. You know why? Because we're not always so gracious. See, sometimes we're not going to treat each other as gracious as God would treat us. But yet we want to receive grace, but sometimes we don't want to give We rather we rather receive it. Oh, well, Lord, you you see my situation, my situation, Lord. You see, you see me have mercy, Lord, have grace on me. And then, but wouldn't you just two hours ago running your mouth about so and so? Somebody say grace. grace. Come on now. So grace does not involve human effort or merit at all. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and th there you go, Willie. Aren't we glad about that, you know? Okay, now, so for sin to be satisfied, everybody say satisfied, because we read that the sin must be satisfied, okay? Now, in order for sin to be satisfied, uh, it's going to take God's grace, amen? And this is what I, the little term that God had given me when we think about God's grace, it is, and if you're taking notes, grace is God's radical alliance centered eternally. I'm going to say that again. Grace is God's radical alliance centered eternally. I know I see y'all just kind of, oh, I'm trying to let that one get in. I, I mean, I ain't, you know. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. Because this, and I hope and pray that as we're, we're done with this, that this would be a, a powerful, powerful uh, 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 a lesson for us to remember and understand. Okay? So, okay. Okay, so yeah, I did say grace ruled out all God's uh, 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 human merit. Okay, now, first of all, let's, let's go with... Uh, the G. And you can come up, you can go ahead, Rick, and click that next one, please. Oh, uh, no, back, 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 sir, back, sir.
Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So the G is, number one, it's God initiating. Now, where would we be if God never initiated grace? You didn't initiate that. That's why, that's why the human merit can't, can't, is, is no involvement in it because it's something that God did. You know, pastor always say, it's God, it's God, it's God, it's God. Well, it is God. And, and, and it's something that he initiated, amen? And watch this. And when God initiated this grace, again, he said grace is not by human standards. Grace is a free gift totally given by God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So somebody say free gift. Free gift. Now, who, and, 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 and you know what? All of us like free gifts. <laughs> Me especially. <laughs> oh, every time I go back in that kitchen, boy, I see God's grace. Amen. <laughs> Y'all know I was going to bring food in there somehow. And I see the fried chicken. And I taste them cookies that Mr. Shirley be doing and, and everybody doing their thing. That is so God's great. And it's so free. And, and, and I accept it freely. <laughs> Miss Rachel pot pie. Oh, man. Shrimp fried rice. <coughs> that was a hint. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now watch this. Now watch this. Uh, oh, I love this. Grace... Now, now, you know, sometimes, the, you know, these people that write in these old English, boy, they use some big words, so I'm, I'm breaking out the dictionary a lot. I'm not even going to front. Okay, but watch this. It says, thus, grace obviates any obligation to gain merit. And I said, now, Lord, I have no idea what the word obviate means, even if I'm pronouncing it correctly, so I had to look it up. So, obviate means to make unnecessary. So let me read it again. Grace makes it unnecessary for any obligation for us to gain any type of merit. That's why it doesn't, you're not saved by your works. See, that's the human merit. And that's, and that's what we always fall back to. See, when Adam and Eve sin, thank you, Holy Ghost, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, the only work that they could do at that time because they disobeyed was to cover themselves. But that didn't really cover the root of their sin. The root of their sin was disobedient and in the, being disobedient. And no matter how much they covered, no matter how much human effort they put into it, that sin was not satisfied. Amen. That sin was only satisfied when God had to slaughter the animal and that blood had to cover their sins. But until then, all they could do is try to cover up. And don't we do the same thing? Yes. When we get involved in things that we know we shouldn't or we do things or we say things that we know we shouldn't, then what we try to do is, just like Adam and Eve, we try to cover, but that's not covering your sins because you're covering up. It's going to take the blood. And the blood is the only thing that can satisfy our sins. Amen. So quit covering up, plead the blood, get it right, and then we can move on. Amen. Come on now, don't shout me down now. It's the blood. And so that's why, that's why, it, that's why he said right here, and I like that word obviate, because it means it's unnecessary. It's a done deal. It ain't nothing that you can do to make it any better because it's already been done. Watch this. And the law as a merit system is no more applicable to a believer since he is no longer under the law but under grace. Yes. Amen? Amen? Say, I'm under grace. I'm under Come grace. on, I'm under grace. I'm under grace. Not under the law, but, but under grace grace. Now watch this. Now here's where the dilemma came in. And y'all, how many of y'all know better than anybody Paul understood these principles? Amen. And something started creeping inside the church once this, because y'all know the devil, once real revelation comes, he immediately is going to try to come in and jack it up. And he may not come and get you to get 
totally off your belief system, but if you can just believe this little thing right here. Well, I know the pastor is preaching good, but maybe that, that little thing that he's talking about might be not so suitable for me. Amen? We get like that, don't we? And Paul understood this and he foresaw it. So that's why he came to this scripture, which is our, our foundation scripture today. And Ms. Rachel, you got the mic? Yes. Okay. Uh, who's up there? Brother Rick, Papa, can you turn to Romans uh, chapter 6, please? Romans, and if you have your Bibles, iPads, y'all know what to do. Romans chapter 6. And see, in understanding, while y'all are turning, in understanding grace, we just can't, and remember, grace is the big picture, but then within the big picture, inside that lies justification and sanctification. And these two principles must be understood for our lives to be victorious. That's and right. maybe some of us are not experiencing the victorious life of the kingdom of God is because we have a skewed view of what justification is and what sanctification is. Yes. Amen. Amen. OK. OK. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Here we go. Now go ahead and go ahead and read, Miss Rachel. What shall we say to all this? Mm hmm. Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Certainly not. Mm -hmm. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Okay. Okay. Go back to verse 1, Brother Rick. Okay. So then Paul says, so what shall we say? Because the problem is with grace is Again, we get so relaxed in God's grace that we that we believe that grace will cover grace will cover us no matter what we do. But grace is not a license right. to sin mm -hmm. and grace is not a license to live in sin. Mm -hmm. Paul understood. He said, I know you're going to sin, right. but I'm not licensing you to live in sin. That's, right. yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. And that, and he saw that, and he saw what the enemy was going to try to put. Well, you know, see, I'm covered, I'm good. Uh, um, uh, First John one nine, <laughs> and then you quote First John one nine, and then, but you ain't changed. You can quote it all you want, but if you ain't changing, all it is is just a quote. I can quote Shakespeare. But if it ain't changing my life, then all it is is just a quote. Amen. So if we're going to quote the word, then be changed by the word that you quote. Yes. And see, this is why grace is so important. This is why justification is so important. This is why sanctification is so important. And I said, man, Lord, why you want, you know, Lord, I have some other stuff I wanted to talk about. You know, why are we talking about grace this morning? Because, son, I, need you, to, I need, to see, need you to see it for yourself, Mr. Biggity. Oh, God be, God be spanking this bottom all the time. <laughs> oh, Lord. Assume the position. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So y'all just don't think, oh, really, he's... He's just floating on clouds out there. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, please. Because <laughs> it's not like that. Believe you and me. But the beauty of it is, as I learn to, to, to operate in God's grace, then I understand, yeah, Lord, okay, I, I know you just spanked my bottom, and I, 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 I know I shouldn't have seen that or I shouldn't have said that, Lord, but thank you for your grace and mercy that you didn't strike me dead. Come on now. Come on now. All of us can sing, sing that tune, can't we? Yes. You know, because if he just for one second took that grace away, just for a second, what would the world be like? Ooh, I don't even want to think about that one. I don't even want to think about that one. And so that's why Paul says, and what shall we say to all these things? Are we to remain 
in sin in order that grace may abound? So you're saying that by you remaining in your sin that you're going to propel grace further? Grace is grace. It's already as far as it's going to go. But, who, but he didn't say just remain in sin. And this is where we get it twisted. Because we say, oh, grace, 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 God's grace. Oh, oh, grace. Thank you for that grace. Thank you, Jesus. I got grace. Amen. Glory to God. Grace, 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 grace. But you're abusing the grace because you're living in sin. Or you're continuing in sin. Or you're remaining in your sins. Because we're supposed to be a distinctive people. We're a distinctive culture here. We're not called to, you know, it ain't nothing wrong with being a part of the culture, but does the, is the culture your part? Does the culture have you? And this is what's happening with our modern day churches. We want to be so caught up with the culture that the culture done caught us. And we're not influencing the culture. We're not in changing the culture. We're not doing anything to the culture because of this scripture right here. And it's, not, and it's not just here, it's all over the world in our churches. And we wonder why, again, why are we not operating in the supernatural power of God? Somebody say supernatural. supernatural. Oh, come on now, say supernatural. supernatural. See, that's something that we don't, I mean, and, even, and I'm, I'm going to be real. I don't know a whole lot about it. I mean, I read about it, I, I hear other ministers, but, 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 but I got a hunger for it, though. I got a hunger for the supernatural yes. and I want to do whatever it takes. And this is the mindset you got to have. You got to do whatever it takes so that, Lord, I can operate in the in, in the full power of the gospel in which you have called me to. Yes. Because I don't want to live my whole life and then I have to stand before your throne. And he said, well, what did you operate in, son? Mm, uh, well, mm, oh, well, mm. how about that chicken? And we keep missing the mark. Yeah. It's not the standard that Pastor Bob set. It's not a standard that Willie Tillman set. It's a standard that Jesus Christ set from the beginning of time until now. And Jesus is the same yesterday, yeah. today, yeah. and tomorrow. Amen? Absolutely. He does not change. And he's calling us to come up higher. We got to come up higher in these last days, folks. Amen. And so, so, so if we feel that we can just continue to live in sin, and I'm not, and I'm not saying nothing big. Sometimes it's just the little small foxes. It's just, it's just the little things, you know. Well, you know, I, don't, I ain't a murderer, and you know, and I, ain't, you know, do, but, but, you know, we all got our big list of what's big. But all sin is big in the eyes of God. So don't try to relegate it to your, your, your human categories. So that you, you, Thank you, Holy Ghost. And the only reason why we do that is so we can feel good. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is, is up on you trying to tell you, yo, what you doing, what you doing, what you doing. But so, so we put it in another part of our mind, you know, somewhere back there. So that we can so that we can so-called live with it and live with ourselves yes. and, and feel that we're cool mm. and then come in the house of God mm. <laughs> glory okay. praise the Lord and the Lord and even the Lord probably like mm. 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 Lord have mercy <laughs> That Willie, oh Lord, that boy, I'm trying to work with him. I'm trying to work with him. I'm trying to work with him. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So now let me, so let me introduce, because see, this lifestyle is actually a doctrine. This type of living where we feel that we can just live how we want to live, do how we want to do, and like the word says, continue in sin, it's a, it's, it's a definite doctrine, and it's the doctrine of antinomianism. Antinomianism, and it literally means, it literally means to sin against the law. Watch this. This theory suggests that a Christian was under no moral obligation whatsoever to observe the moral law. 
I'm going to say that one more time. So this theory suggests that a Christian was no longer was was a Christian was under no moral obligation whatsoever to observe the moral law. So if God initiated grace, then I'm covered. I'm okay. But is that the truth? If he's if the spirit is checking out our lifestyles. Because sometimes our lifestyles ain't matching up with grace. Is that real talk? Real talk. Because the, the bottom line is, don't we, don't we, I, I think, I, and, I, and I thank you, Holy Ghost, and I really believe this. I think all of us have that yearning where we truly, truly, truly want to be on point in our Christian walk with God. Am I right or am I wrong? Come on now. Is that true? Every one of us want to be on point and we all struggle. See, this, this is the thing. We all got our thing, but you just don't relax in that. And that's the problem. Because, watch this, and I've said this before. See, if I open the one door, and then I go through another door, and then I keep going through all these doors of, of, of disobedience, it's going to make it harder for me to turn back and then walk through those doors. But if he says repent, then that's what you got to do. You got to walk back through those doors and get back to the foot of the cross. Amen. And say, Lord, change me. Amen. Change my heart. Amen. And this is where the justification and this is where sanctification comes in. Because we can't settle like we are because if the trumpet blows, oh boy, oh boy, and, 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 and let me say it like this, I'm not saying because I don't have the authority to say who can and cannot go to heaven, that's not my place to say, but one thing I do know is this. How would God say, let's just say for an example, uh, uh, your thing was, okay, let's say, just say for a college guy, his thing is pornography. Now, he's a Christian and he loves the Lord, you know what I'm saying? But he just, you know, this is just my thing. So now the trump blows, but because he's under grace, so he thinks, I'm good. But then why would God regulate the sinner to the same consequence and then not check you? Come on now. Everybody want real talk now. Y'all know how I do it. So how can we live like we live and then expect this, but then the sinner is doing the same thing I'm doing, and then but you expect that of them, but then expect God not to do anything whatsoever? That you're that cool? That you're so above grace? That you're so above the law? That you're so above holiness? That you're so above righteousness just because you got grace? That when that trumpet blows, you good? That's why this is serious, guys. And I don't care who says it. I know what I'm talking about. Because... It's the word and it's truth. Yes, yes. And that don't alleviate you whatsoever or it doesn't alleviate me either. That's why Paul says, what, 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 what are y'all talking about? What should I say to this? What, what in the world are you guys talking about? Because if you're living like that, you ain't living no better than the sinner. And how is the sinner going to differentiate uh, your light and his darkness when we're doing the same thing. How is that going to work? How is that going to line up? Yeah. But you, but, but I, I'm a Christian and I got my bumper sticker and I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, and even, and, and, and that's all good. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, put all the bumper stickers you want on your car. Just don't put it on mine. You know? <laughs> but watch this. But the, the, the sinner who don't know any better, who can't, who don't understand what this light and darkness is all about, what, where, where does that put them? 
And I gave an example this morning, and it, and it just resonates. I, I thank God for the Holy Ghost, because if we just listen to him, he is just going, and, and, and we all go through that warfare emotionally. We all go through warfare in the mind. I go through it. We all go through all of this stuff, but if we listen, there's always lessons that God is trying to, 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 to give to us about this grace and about this mercy, amen? So uh, I told the brothers, <laughs> well, <laughs> I told the brothers, you know, we were downtown, and, uh, and, I, and I talked to sis about this the other day. Uh, we were downtown, and uh, so we were parked at the stoplight, and so this girl comes walking, you know, in front of the truck, you know, and I'm sitting on this side, so she comes walking in front of the truck and then walk, you know, basically by my window. And I said, Lord, I didn't know they wore Daisy Dukes anymore. I thought that was out. But, but I mean... <laughs> That's right. Brick house and letting it all hang out. You know what I'm talking about? As y'all know my term, boom boom. You know what I'm talking about? So boom boom was booming, right? So 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 now wait 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 a minute wait a minute Willie. Now you're you're under God's grace. You're under God's mercy. This girl may not be. So watch this. So if I gawk at her and get the reaction that she's looking for, then that tightens the grip of Satan around her spirit come on now isn't that true that just tightens and reaffirms the grip of satan on her life and now when she goes to the party dressing like that expecting to get all the attention to the guys and then she gets a little too much to drink and now the brother done pulled her in the room and she says no and he says yes and then she ended up getting raped what part did i have in that is that real mr d isn't that real? I played a part in that. Because why, and, and watch this. And I told, and I said this this morning. Why couldn't I just look at the sister and say, well, you know what? Can I just tell you something, ma'am? Jesus loves you. Why, why wasn't that my first reaction? Why was that not my first reaction? Why did I not think about this girl's soul first? And are we doing the same thing as we go through life? Are we thinking about people's souls? Because I was so concerned and wrapped up in the boom. But then when she goes to hell, it's going to be a big boom. But then I'm, I'm chilling up in heaven. Mm-hmm. And why this girl's like, Dude, you, you could at least tell me Jesus loved me. Even if you ain't had a gospel track, you're the preacher. Amen. You're the man of God. You're the one that's anointed. You're the one that got the power. All you had to do is just say, and how do we know this, this girl got daddy issues? Wouldn't have been a nice for a man to look past her body and look into her spirit and speak into her life and say, Jesus love you, just like Jesus did with the Samaritan woman. See, all the other brothers were just waxing and taxing and just using and abusing her, but Jesus looked into her eyes because when grace comes on the scene, grace can look you right into your eyes, grace can look past the nonsense and past the hype and say, I love you for you. Come on. Amen. See, that's grace. That's grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Come on, say grace. grace. And so that's why when Paul anticipated that this, this mindset, which is just, again, I believe running rampant in our churches, this mindset is not what God intended when he established or instituted grace, amen. Uh, and again, Paul had anticipated this thing, so that's why Paul said, look, man, you know, we got to address this, y'all, because this is not right. Now watch this. Thank you, Lord. Whew. So, boy, I tell you, this was a hard one. This was a hard one, because I just kept seeing all the things, you know, because it's got, it's got to start with me. Yeah. I can't tell you if it ain't starting with me, you know what I'm saying? 
So as I was going through the week and I'm, and I'm thinking about these things and I'm like, man, Lord, what am I doing for, you, for your grace and what's your grace? How am I abusing your grace and your mercy when other people's lives are at stake? Other people's eternities are at stake, but I'm trying to play cool and trying to, you know, be all that. God help me. Amen. I don't know about y'all. God help me. You know? And so watch this. So in every age, there has been those who have uh, denounced the doctrine of justification by faith. This is so incorrect, this doctrine, because they believe that this doctrine logically leads to sin. If the believer is treated by God as righteous and good works would not save him, then the evil works would do the opposite. That means that God won't condemn me because of my evil works. And that's why Paul says, certainly, certainly, certainly not. Okay? And watch this. Paul presses the fact, watch this, oh, this is beautiful, that the absolute necessity of sanctification and justification are as inseparable as, uh, as they are as separable as the fruit and companion to justification. So let me see that, read this again. Uh, Paul presses the fact that the absolute necessity of sanctification and a holy life as the inseparable fruit and companion of justification. Does that make sense? That means the two go hand in hand. You can't have a holy life, amen, and say that you're holy, and we can't have sec uh, uh, justification because all of that is a companion, uh, uh, sanctification, all that's a companion of justification. All these occasions, occasion, justification, sanctification. But all these things work hand in hand. That's why he said, uh, shall we sin? No. We shall take encouragement that the more sin is prevailed, the more God's grace is prevailed. We are not to abuse grace, God said. And then Paul said, God forbid, let it be far from us. Those opinions that give the countenance to sin opens a door to practical immoralities. And these immoralities are to be rejected with the greatest of disgust. Amen? Amen. So we got to think about, if we're talking about grace, what doors have I opened this week? to immorality and not just mean you know sexual immorality but I'm just immoralities in general amen what doors have I opened this week because all of this impedes the Holy Spirit all of these things will impede the working of God in our lives and again guys it's not I'm not here to condemn anybody because I'm telling y'all I'm just I, I am guilty because Lord only knows, and I, would, and, I, and, I, and I really wish I would have said, Jesus love you to that girl. I really wish I would have done that. And I'm not beating myself up, but I wish I would have just said that. It, just, it would have took a second. But I was so caught up in my own thing that I forgot the main thing. That's why when I look, I have to, I have to, we all have to view people through the eyes of holiness. Yeah. We have to view people through the eyes of justification because it's what God instituted. And we're all in this process of sanctification. Justification is what Jesus did on the cross for us. Amen. Yeah. And we're justified by his words. It's not of man. It is a free gift of God. Amen. But now we're all in that process of sanctification, walking it out. Y'all remember that song? Walk it out. Walk it out. Do, do, walk it out. I don't know who sang it, but somebody, one of them rappers back in the day sang it, you know. And, and, and it's our responsibility to walk it out. And like, and like uh, Paul, Paul said earlier, when he talked about uh, abounding grace, he said, sin abounded 
and super abounded. But grace more so abounded over whatever sin abounded. Does that make sense? Okay, and so the believer is not automatically drawn to license into his lifestyle of sin. Watch this. A mature understanding of justification by faith leads the believer to appreciate God's grace so that the end result is obedience to God out of a heart filled with gratitude. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so, so one thing I have to understand about justification is, number one, it is by faith. Number two, it is done by God and God only. And what I have to do is I have to appreciate that because the more I appreciate what God has done, the more I'm going to want to obey him. See, if I don't appreciate grace, then my obedience is just like throwing trash on the ground. It don't matter whether I pick it up or not. But God says, I want you to be obedient, amen? And, 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 and I'm going to be obedient because I have a heart filled with gratitude because of what God has done, amen? So the scripture says, what shall we say to all of this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, his favor or love and mercy may multiply and overflow in our lives? So we have to think, what's overflowing in our lives? What, what's the main thing that's coming out of our hearts? And that's why I feel so, you know, to be honest, I feel so convicted and compelled at the same time. Because I don't really want to see anybody Leave this place not knowing Jesus, amen? amen. I just don't, it, it just, sometimes it just boggles my mind. And I mean, we can't make people get saved. We can't make people accept Jesus Christ. But at least if I'm living the way I'm supposed to, that would make them at least think twice. If we're all living the way we're supposed to, hopefully that will make them think twice about their eternal lives, Amen. Okay, 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 so let's, let's move along, let's move along. So we can see how prevalent this doctrine is and how, how uh, these things are running throughout our churches. And then, the, and then the word says, because the penalty of sin was so severe and sin had such a dominance, we're going to go to R, it took God's radical grace and radical love to be implemented so that it shocked the devil. So can we go to that R, Rick, please? And the R stands for radical, radical, which, uh, again, God's radical grace. And God was so radical in his plan of redemption that it cost God everything. So not only God is speaking, but he's also showing and proving because it cost him something. Think about it. God created the devil, and because the devil wanted to usurp God, God had to kick him out, so it cost him that. And then he said, well, let us make man in our image. So he created Adam and Eve in the garden, and then they disobeyed. So now he has to deal with that, too. And then the third thing is, he gave his only begotten son and placed him on the cross for our sins. And you know what? I don't have any children, but, you know, I'm not sure how apt I would be to give up my son and daughter for a murderer or a rapist or someone in that vein or really maybe for anybody. I don't know. That's a big, big thing. And it was those three things that God was radical about and he says, I don't mind paying the price because you're worth it. Amen. So when you think about grace, think about your worth in the eyes of God. Because that cost him everything because he said that you're worth everything. Amen? Amen. Tell somebody you're worth it. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, you're worth it. Come on, tell somebody you're worth it. You are worth it. Amen? You are worth it. 
So sanctification, I mean, excuse me, the satisfaction of sin makes it possible for God to exercise his graces. And so when he flexed, hell shook at his magnificent when he instituted just justification and sanctification. If there was great power and there was a great power in the fall of man and that power condemned us. But there's much, much more power in the righteousness of God and the grace of Christ, who is the Lord from heaven to justify and save us. God's radical grace is deeper and broader than any stream of guilt and shame, but there is a call to radical holiness. Amen? Amen. We should be living holy. Amen? And again, you know, we talked about Satan. We talked about what, what, what happened with Adam. We talked about what happened to Jesus. And it just, God says, you know what, Satan, you think you're radical? I got to get more radical. And this is the part that I love, okay? So turn to uh, John chapter 2, and I'm going to have Miss Rachel read. Let me show you how radical God got. John chapter 2, and we're going to read uh, from verse 13 to 21. John chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 13. And we're going to go to 21. And whenever you're ready, Miss Rachel. Now the Passover of the Jews was approaching, mm -hmm. so Jesus went up to Jerusalem. There he found in the temple enclosure those who were selling oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers sitting there also at their stands. And having made a lash, a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple enclosure, both the sheep and the oxen, spilling and scattering the broker's money and upsetting and tossing around their trays, their stands. Then to those who sold the doves, he said, take these things away out of here. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise, a marketplace, a sales shop. And his disciples remembered that it is written in the Holy Scriptures, zeal, the fervor of love, for your house will eat me up. I will be consumed with jealousy for the honor of your house. Then the Jews retorted, what sign can you show us seeing you do these things? What sign, miracle, token, indication can you give us as evidence that you have authority and are commissioned to act in this way? Jesus answered them, destroy, undo this temple, and in three days I will raise it up again. Then the Jews replied, it took 46 years to build this temple sanctuary, and will you raise it up in three days? But he had spoken of the temple, which was his body. Amen. Amen. So now let's, let's think about grace, okay? And everything that it cost God to... To, to, to establish and to implement grace throughout the whole world. Now, here it is. It's the Passover. Everybody say Passover. And we all know what the, the Passover stood for. It's when the Jews were in Egypt, and God says, look, we're gonna, I'm going to send out the death spirit, and they're going to kill all the firstborn. But what you need to do is you need to take the blood and make sure that you apply the blood to the doorpost so when the death angel come, he will pass over you. And now, the, now, now think about that. Again, God's grace. God's grace and the blood caused the death angel to pass over us. Think about that. Now, you could have been in the wreck, but because of the blood of Jesus, that death angel passed over you. We could have died from cancer, but because of the blood, that death spirit had to pass over you. Amen. We could have been locked up. In, I, I know I could have been locked up in jail, but thank God for the blood. And that joker had to pass over me. So, so thank God for the blood. Amen. But here, it, and, 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 and here they are, they're supposed to be celebrating the Passover, right? And then Jesus comes in there and he starts whipping and he starts cleaning house and he starts straightening things out. And then the first thing that came out their, their mouth, verse 18, is what sign shall you so, show us seeing that you do this? What gives you the right to come in here and do what you do? What gives you the right 
to, to, to kick us out of the temple. Well, number one, son, it's the temple of God. Amen. You're in God's house. Yeah. And you're dis disrespecting the house of the Lord. Amen. That's because your mind was more focused on trying to get that money. Your mind was focused on other things other than the holiness and the presence and the power that's supposed to be going on in this temple. And then when God starts cleaning house, the first thing that they ask is, show me a sign. So you mean to tell me in our modern day lives that God got to show us a sign just to get us to get our lives to get cleaned up? He's got to show you a sign so we can straighten up. You're in the temple. This is the temple. We're, we are the church, but this is still the temple of God. Amen. And when we come in here, we should be thankful that the deaf spirit passed over us. Amen. We should come in here celebrating that the deaf spirit passed over us. Amen. Thank God for the blood because pass over. And instead of them being thankful, coming into the house of God to be thankful, they're getting their hustle on. Hmm. Profiting in the temple of God. When you should be praying and praising in the temple of God. Come on now. Amen. Let that thing sink in. And you wonder why there's only a few times we see where Jesus get angry, but that made him furious. And if Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and how do you think that makes him feel now? When people come into the temple of God and instead of worshiping and instead of praising the God, praising God, you getting your hustle on. You getting your little sidestep on. Come on now. So now when the Holy Ghost starts waxing and taxing and whipping and, and running, running stuff out of your life, then you're going to turn and look at God and say, well, give me a sign. Show me a sign, Grace. How ridiculous is that? You're in the wrong. Grace steps on the scene and then you're going to tell Grace, show you a sign. <laughs> Woo! What was they thinking? I don't know. <laughs> and, then, and then they turn around and said, verse 18 up there, Rick. Please. <laughs> Watch this. Listen to how ridiculous this is, right? So first of all, what sign can you show us seeing that you do these things? And what sign, what miracle, what token, what indication can you give us as evidence that you have the authority and our commission to act in this way. Well, okay, well, did, oh, oh, so you want to see my resume is what you're trying to tell me. Well, then let me pull out my resume. I'm the same cat that was back there in Egypt when your folk fathers were back there and the death spirit was going to take them out, but I told the death spirit because of the blood, I passed over. That's my authority. Amen. I was right there. Where was you? And then you're going to tell me, show me a sign. Well, then think about the Passover, because that's what you're supposed to be thinking about. Now how you can get your pockets fat. Yeah, yeah. Disrespecting the house of God. When you need to be up in here praying and hooping and hollering before the Lord to get yourself straight, but you... Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Amen? That's why Jesus got so upset. You're in here hustling for your own benefit instead of reverencing the house of the Lord and the Lord of the house. See, when grace walks in the temple, grace can see the filth. Grace can see the abuse that's going on. But grace will also drive out the filth that's in God's house. So when God starts driving stuff out, don't get mad. Don't get upset and don't cop no rebellious attitude because the rebelliousness is just like witchcraft. And we got a lot of witches and warlocks in our houses today. Because if you're rebellious to the word, then you're acting in the, like a witch. You're acting like a warlock. 
And then you're abusing the grace of God on top of that. And then you want to come into God's house and you want to see the supernatural power of God operate through you. But you got the supernatural power of darkness manifesting in your life every day. That's why you got to know your position in grace. Amen. Amen. Your position is Ephesians chapter two. I am seated with Christ in the heavenlies. Amen. That means I'm going to I'm going to sit down. And everything else is under my feet. And that's why we're pastor always harping on it. That's why this is a mind thing. So when the enemy brings the temptation, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says that whenever the enemy brings a temptation, there is an exit door. There is a way of escape. Amen. And this is why we can't abuse grace. Because when we start abusing grace, somebody might need the same grace that you're abusing. And watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And God wants to use you to be an influence in someone's life. But because you're abusing grace, God got to pass over you and try to find somebody else he can use. And then we're frustrated and we're angry and we're mad and wondering why. What is going on in my Christian life? What's going on in my Christian walk? Why am I not effective? Why am I playing church? Why am I not seeing the power of God? Why am I not experiencing the supernatural? Why, 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 why? Why, why? And we get so angry and frustrated that we just relegate our lives to the Christian culture. Well, if I ain't doing nothing in the kingdom, I might as well just. <clears throat> and we settle for this. That's not the grace of God. Amen. This is not what God had intended. Yes, God doesn't mind displaying signs and he doesn't mind displaying wonders, but it has to work through a vessel whom he can trust. Can I trust you with my glory? Can I trust you with my power? Can I trust you with my might? When you come to the temple, what's your focus? What you focusing on? What's your, what's your focus all week long? And, I, I, and like I said, I, I'm speaking to myself because that joker is always right up in here, always trying to get up in my dome, in my head, and in my heart at all times. So it's a constant fight for me, too. But y'all know, think about my position, and then we can think about somebody else's position who may be in a worse situation. And then somebody who's in a worse situation, living by the grace of God, loving by the grace of God, operating by the grace of God, doing supernatural things by the grace of God. And look at their situation. So what's our excuse? And here's the downfall. That's why God says, when you come into your promised land, make sure you don't get so fat that you forget me. Make sure you don't get so overextended that you don't forget my grace. Come on now. And how often do we so forget because because we good. I can go to the fridge and like pastor said, I can get me that piece of banana pie. I can get me some ice cream. But see, this is why God had to get radical. Jesus just shocked him. I love that. (laughs) You know, some people just do things for shock effect, but that's what Jesus did. I'm going to show you how radical my grace is. Y'all in here messing around and disrespecting the temple of God. I'm just going to beat all of y'all out of here. <laughs> and then not only did he whip them out to church, and then they said, what's this? And then they said, well, what sign you going to give me? What authority you going to give me? Well, I'm going to show you a sign. You killed this temple, and then in three days, I'm going to raise it up. <laughs> Come on, think about that now. He said, you killed this temple, and I'm going to raise it up. But watch this. It's because they, were, they weren't walking in the spirit at that time. They were operating in the flesh, so they couldn't see him in the spirit. So they were thinking, well, how, how could they... How could he build it? It took 40 something years to, to build this temple. What you talking about? And he was talking about his body. Yes. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Yes. And guess who's the temple? Yes. Yes. 
So tear this temple down. And God says, I'll raise it up. Woo. Boy, that's a revelation right there. Think about that, church. Woo. So if you feel torn down in your spirit, don't worry. Jesus says, I'll raise it up. <laughs> Glory to God. See, that's grace, amen. That's the grace of God, amen. That's the radical grace of God. That whatever he tears down, it can get built up. And if Satan tears it down, he can still build it back up. But you got to see it in the eyes of the spirit. You can't see it in the flesh, church. Because all you're going to be thinking about is the building. No, he said, you, you're the temple. Tear down your flesh. Tear down your pride. Tear down your ego. Tear down your arrogance. Tear down your lust. Tear these things down so that I can raise you up. That's why, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's why the word says, humble yourself before the Lord. Because in due season, what he's going to do, he's going to lift you up. Come on. That's why you got to be humble before the Lord. That's why you got to walk before the Lord. Because he wants to raise you up. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, let me, let me, check, check. okay, 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 let me hurry up, let me hurry up, I'm sorry, y'all know how I go, okay, so now, uh, so we said the G, and then we said the R, now we're going to move on to the A, Papa Rick, and that's the alliance, the alliance, and the beautiful thing about the alliance is God is always mending the relationship between us and mankind, how beautiful is that, isn't that awesome? He's always got you on his mind. You know, there used to be a song back in the day, every little thing you do, you're on my mind. I don't know who sang it, but one of them boys. But anyways, you're always on the mind of God. Amen. There's never not a point where you're not on his mind. And see, that's why he says, look, yeah, you know, I'm God and I can do all this by myself. But you know what? I want to form an alliance with mankind. I want to form an alliance with the people whom I created. That's why he gets so offended when we don't understand uh, justification and sanctification and grace. Because he says, I'm doing all of this because I love you and I want to form that, that deep, intimate alliance with you. Amen. Thank God for it. So even since, even when he created mankind, he knew man was going to fall. He's God. He knows everything. He knew you were going to mess up. But watch this. Watch this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I said this this morning, and I feel the Lord wants me to say it. When the scripture talks about, and I'm just going to get all kilted just for a quick second, but when the scripture says that we who are of robust faith ought to bear somebody's frailty or somebody's weakness or somebody's indiscrepancy could be your test. This could be the point where God is trying to mend some things in your heart through relationship by bringing someone who's broken into your presence. And if you don't allow the power of God, the love of God, the grace of God to be set in your mind to whereas you can you can fully embrace somebody and watch this. And then the scripture goes on to say we're not to bear with them so that we don't please ourselves. See, grace is not going to abuse the person. Grace won't uh, 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 leave somebody hanging or, or misrepresent the kingdom. Grace would say, look, I'm trying to mend this relationship. I understand that you're heartbroken. I understand that you got problems. I understand that you got needs. And through Jesus, I want to mend this relationship so that your relationship with God could be mended. Amen. It's this, then this. Amen? And, and mending relationships is just God's specialty. Amen? Almost done, guys. Just hang in there with me for a little bit. Man's failure caused God to activate a plan to save his creation that was made in his image. 
God made this alliance with man, and it's man's responsibility to honor the standard agreed to by both God and us, his children, who accepted Jesus Christ as his savior. So if I'm going to come into alliance with you, one of the names for God, thank you, Holy Ghost, is called El Bereth which means he's the God of the covenant, amen? And God made a covenant with mankind, amen? And when we come into Christ, he made that covenant with Moses, he made that covenant with Abraham, he made that covenant with all of our forefathers, and we fall right under that covenant, amen? And so while he's reaching out and he's trying to mend these relationships with us, he's saying, look, I'm keeping up my end of the bargain. I'm keeping up with mine. What about you? Are you in agreement so that we can mend these relationships, so that we can, I can mend your broken heart, I can mend your mind, I can mend your body, I can mend your finances? I can mend anything if you allow me to. Amen? But you got to allow me. We have to form this alliance and you can't break your word. God's going to fulfill his word. It's us who breaks it. Because when I choose uh, darkness rather than light, that I'm, I'm breaking the contract. I'm walking out on the contract. I'm reneging on the contract. Amen. And so, and then we wonder why we're not seeing this thing come to pass in our lives because we keep breaking the contract. We signed our names on that dotted line, amen? So we say, amen? But if we're, if we're going to live our lives like Paul says, then you're breaking the contract. So God is saying, look, it's through my grace that I just want to help men this alliance. Amen. So we had the G R A and then C. C is for centered. And I'm hurrying up. C is for centered. And everything is centered on the justification and the sanctification of God. Let me just read this real quick. I won't be too long. What I love about sanctification. Here we go. Sanctification. Okay. I know I put it here somewhere. Sorry. Okay, 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 so watch this, okay, okay. So, holiness is like the big giant highway. God calls us to live holy, amen? Sanctification is the car in which we get in, okay? Now watch this, there's two other terms I'm gonna talk about. It's called mortification and vivification. Mortification and vivification, and these are like the engine. Okay, so we got holiness, we got sanctification, you got mortification and vivification, and all of this, and, and justification is like the tires, okay? So all of these things work together. Now let me tell you, because I know those are some big words, mortification is the putting off of the old man. That's what mortification means. And vivification means living to righteousness living from righteousness. It's already a done act. You don't have to do, just be. Does that make sense? Be righteous. Be holy. Do the right thing. These things, that's who we are, amen? And all of this is part of the part, uh, comes through uh, uh, sanctification, amen? And, and justification, okay? So again, God wants to form that alliance with us. God wants us to be centered. And then all of these things, the love, the mercy, all of this ties in together. And then E, and all of these things will take us until eternity. Because he's perfecting us, amen? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're not perfect. We know that. We make mistakes. We understand that, but we can't live in them. I can't keep saying, you know, uh, if, I'm, if I'm cheating on my wife, oh baby, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, then I go and cheat the next day. Oh baby, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, then I go back and cheat again. You know, Rachel, you're gonna get tired of that mess. You, I know Rachel ain't gonna put up with that mess. I rebuke you, devil, in Jesus' name right now. 
Get out! In Jesus' name. You ain't doing me like that. I'm a child. I'm a woman of God. Amen? You know? We ain't gonna put up with that in the natural, right? So why do you think God should put up with it in the spirit? Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. And you go back and do it again. Oh, Lord. See, that's living in it. Because, see, if I really repent, then that means, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. And you just keep on walking. Now, you may turn back a little bit. Lord, forgive me. And then you keep walking a little further. And you do it again. Lord, please forgive me. But, see, you're doing it less and less and less. And that's sanctification. Amen. It's the process of being cleansed. It's that process of being holy. And sometimes we just relegate uh, these terms and these words to, you know, the things. But it's the truth. See, to understand justification and, 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 and sanctification, you got to understand justification cleared you. Sanctification is cleansing you. Let me say that again. Justification has cleared you. But sanctification is cleaning you up. Amen. And we all need that good cleansing. Amen. Amen. And this is grace. Now, I know Joseph Prince can do it better. And I know Creflo and T.D. All those cats can do it better. But that's just Willie Tillman, you know. Amen. Amen. So now I, I, know, I know we're ready to eat. But let's, let's, let's just pause for a moment. Let's just pause just for a little bit. How have I been abusing the grace of God? And let's think, am I living in sin? Right, Ms. Rachel? Am I living in this thing? Because this is serious. Very, very serious, folks. Because as I said earlier, why are you going to hold the sinner to the same standard in which you're living? If, if they're doing it and you're doing it, what, what's the difference? And how does it look in the eyes of God? It don't matter if you've been a church member for 25,000 years. It don't matter. Sin is sin is sin is sin. And God's going to drive it out one way or the other. So whether you deal with it now or you want to deal with it when you, when you, when you, whenever you see his face. And, I, I, and I, again, this is just my personal thing. I don't never, I talked to Missy about this a while back. Here's the thing, me personally, that I'm afraid of. If I'm to be living in sin, and let's say I'm just out there wiling, wiling out or doing whatever. And then I keep coming into the house of God and then when, you know, playing the role, doing my thing. And then the trumpet blows. And because God is a just God, think about it. He is a just God. Who's to say, I'm just saying, well, Willie Tillman, see, you done lived your life. And I, and I was trying to work with you. I was trying to get you to that place. And you just, okay, well, maybe you'll get it right the second time around. Because we think, because how prideful is it for us to think that I can live any way I kind of, I want to live and then when the trumpet blows, I'm out of here. Who are you to think like that? Like that? When God ain't going to hold the sinner to that same standard, the sinner ain't going, and then you're his son, well, I'm his son and our daughter, but that don't mean you ain't going to get a spanking. You better think about that. What? He's the just judge, not you. He's the just judge, not me. And just because you ain't hearing it preached, well, I'm going to preach it. I would be very, very cautious and careful in these last days. Because if I ain't acting right and I ain't doing right and being right and that trumpet blows, he may, because of his justness, may say, well, I'll give you another chance to get it right. And now you really got to go through. This is why grace is so important. This is why this is the age of grace, amen? Because it's God's grace that gives, that gives us the opportunity to repent and change our ways and get it right now. Now, today is the day of salvation, folks. I'm not talking about how long you've been a member here. I'm talking about this is the walk of the Christian. And it's time for us to rise up, amen? 
It's time for us to get it right. Amen. And today is the day. Now is the time. Now, I might be wrong. And if I'm wrong, then I'll, I'll, I'll come to your house in heaven. And I'll say, man, you know, I was wrong. I, say, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know. You know, I mean, you know, man, you know. But what if I'm right? And that's just something that the Spirit just revealed to me. And I have heard a other, couple other prophets talk about that same subject. So it just ain't me. Oh, that's just Willie talk up there talking, trying to scare me. I ain't trying to do nothing. If you feel convicted, that's the Holy Ghost. Because I don't preach condemnation. Because I can look each and every one of you in your eye and let you know I love you. And mean it. Might not always like the things you do, but I still love you. <laughs> I still love you, though. I love you with all my heart. So what are we going to do? I want to see revival, folks. I'm being, I'm being honest. My heart is, I want to see the glory of God. I want to experience the supernatural. I want to see the dead raised. I want everything that God has for me, and I want to see it manifested here on this earth. And if that is your heart's cry, then let's... Papa, if you just put on music just for a little bit, come on, food's going to be there when it get there. But this is, this, is, this is kingdom business right now. We got to get some stuff right, folks. And we can't, we can't sit, in the, sit in this pride, folks. That's what got Satan kicked out of heaven is because of his pride. We really need to look at this thing for what it really is, folks. Amen? So I said, with every, heart, every head bowed and every eye closed, please. Hallelujah. I didn't get to speak on everything that I had prepared. I, some, sometimes I guess I just over prepare and that's okay. But the meat of the truth was preached today, folks. And I said, I feel I, I, feel I said everything that God wanted me to say. Now it's your part. He's trying to mend that relationship. He's trying to impart that grace. He's initiating that grace. He's trying, and he's radical about initiating it. He wants to form that alliance with you. He's trying to get your life centered in him so that we can make it from now until eternity. That's grace. That's God's grace. And if you say, man, well, you know, there's just, I, there's definitely some things in my life, there's definitely some things that need to be straightened out, then please take the time to do so. The altar is open if you want to come, no pressure. Whatever the Spirit tells you to do, that's between you and the Holy Ghost. But whatever you do, make sure that your pride ain't holding you back. If the Spirit is telling you to come, then you're supposed to be coming. If he, if he says sit, then sit. But whatever he tells you to do, do it. We have an opportunity, and I know that we're changing the world, but we can change the world. But we can't change the world if we're not being changed by the word of God and the truth of God. And if we keep backbiting and keep trying to hinder one another and impede one another's progress, then we're, we're not going to do anything for the kingdom. God didn't call you to be a judge. Not when I already justified you. He said, I put it, I, I, I put it on my account. I done took all your mess. I took all your abuses. I done took all your nasty attitudes. Your foul mouth. Your wave of waves. I put that on my account and gave you grace. Not for you to use and abuse. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Kids, come on now. Kids, y'all young, and the world is at your feet. And with all this technology and all this stuff, you can rock the world for the Jesus. We can rock the world for the kingdom. But what you doing at night on your phone? What you doing over the internet? Are you glorifying God? Or are you glorifying yourself? Your selfishness? Dogging people out? 
talking bad about people and then blasting them. What you doing on that phone? I'm not anti-phone, I'm not anti-internet, so I'm not anti any of that stuff. But you're called to holiness. If you're doing unholy things, then shame on you and you need to get it right. We need to get it right. We need to get it right, church. So that the glory and the power of God can settle in this place and we can see, see things that we never even dreamed of. Because again, Jesus said, everything that I have done, you're supposed to be doing more. Well, where is the more in your life? Where is the more, church? Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it in your own personal walk with Jesus? I'm not talking about your husband. I'm not talking about your wife. I'm talking about you individually. Where are you in your walk with God? Where is your attitude? How are you submitting to the Holy Ghost? How are you submitting to this word? We can't just, it can't be just sweet and sweet and by and by. There's got to be a distinction in our walk. The word said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So God says, I'll do my part, but where's your hunger? And how thirsty are you? How thirsty are you to see revival in this land? How hungry are you to see lost souls saved? Where is your hunger and where is your thirst? Amen? Where is your hunger and where is your thirst? Because he says, if you come to me thirsty and you come to me hungry, I'm going to fill you up. And that's what the Spirit is wanting to do in this last hour, folks. In you, to you, and through you. And it's all called grace. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Lord, I'm decreeing and declaring in the name of Jesus that you're doing a great work right now. I sense it in the spirit. Let go of that pride. Let go of that ego. Let go of your pomps and stance. Let that mess go. And let the spirit of God do what he wills in your life. Hallelujah. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for the glory, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, that greater glory is coming to this house, Father God. And we will see signs. We will see wonders. We will see miracles, Father God. We will see revival in this house, Father God. We will see, I pray in the name of Jesus and declare it that we'll see every chair filled. Not just some come and go so they can get their hustle on and then, and then, and then you know, be out. But people are going to come because they, 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 thank you, Lord, when your word says that when you're lifted up, I will draw all men. We're lifting up your name, Father. We're lifting up the standard of holiness. We're going to lift up the standard of righteousness, Father God. Lord, use us. Cleanse us. Do what you have to do within us, Father God, so that we can be right. We want to be your tools, Father. Put us in your hands and use us as you see fit, Father. Forgive us all, Lord. I'm throwing myself in the prayer. Forgive us all, Father God. You know our selfishness. You know our greediness. You know our lust. You know our temperaments, Father God. You know maybe really in the depths of our hearts, you know, it seemed right at the first at, at, at the first onset, it seemed like a good thing, but the more I think about it, it was wrong. It was wrong, it was wrong, and, and I'm sorry, Lord. I'm asking for your forgiveness, Lord, because I don't want to impede your glory. I don't want to hinder the Holy Ghost. We need revival, Father. People need to be saved just like that girl downtown, Father. And Lord, I failed you, but Lord, I pray that you'll send somebody to preach the gospel to that girl. Where she don't have to dress like that. Don't have to be like that. Lord, we don't need you to come to our house with, with whips and come in there and whipping us out. We don't need any. Lord, we want to we wanna freely repent. Just like you've given us grace freely. Lord, we want to freely repent right now in the name of Jesus.
and we want to say we're sorry, Father God. We offended you, Father. Have mercy on us, Father God, and let your grace cover us just like the blood at the Passover. Cover us, Father God, and wash us clean. Wash our minds clean, Lord. Our conscience and our subconscious, wash it clean. Wash clean our hearts, Lord. For out of it flows all the issues of life, our hearts, Father God. Cleanse our hearts, Lord. Renew our hearts, Father God. And Lord, may we make a fresh decree and a fresh declaration, Lord, that as you see fit, Father God, we're going to submit to you, Holy Spirit. We're going to obey the word, even if it makes us look strange, even if it makes us look funny. Even if everybody is doing this, I'm not going to do this. I'm going against the flow. And I don't care what it looks like because I'm more concerned about your soul than going with the flow. You hear me, kids? You hear me, kids? Everybody going with the flow. You in the flow or you going against the flow? Which one is it? Which one is it? You're responsible. You understand what I'm saying. Be different. Be radical. Be a kingdom kid. A boy, a girl, a young man. Be kingdom and let the power of God flow in through your life. Well, I don't know nothing about that, Will. Well, all you got to do is just put your foot on the water and walk on the water and God ain't going to let you sing. If you want to see miracles, you tell God, Lord, I want to see miracles and I'm going to step out on faith. So when your homeboy comes up and say, yo, man, my body is hurting, my ankle is hurting, you pray for that ankle. You pray for your friends to get saved. You start telling them about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. See, this, this is glory. This is kingdom, folks. This is what it's all about right here. God's people getting together, hallelujah, in his name and under his blood, church. So, Father, I pray that you would bless each and every family. I pray that you would bless everyone under the sound of my voice, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the work of grace and how important your grace is to us, Lord. And Father, Lord, we just pray if need be, Lord, may we, may we get this word and play it over and over and over again to get this thing in our spirit that we are more than a conquerors and we can do and we can be by the power and by the help of the Lord. So Lord, again, bless everybody. Bless the food in the back, Lord. Let it be nourishment to our bodies and our bodies for your service, for your service, Lord. And may we just be excited about what you're going to do in this house and even more excited about what you're doing in our individual lives because enough is enough. And we're telling, we're putting the devil on notice that if you're coming in my, in my body, or if you're coming in my mind, or if you're coming in my house, you're trespassing, and we're going to run you out in Jesus' name. We're going to run you out, devil. We're going to run you out in Jesus' name. We're going to run you out in Jesus' name. So again, Father, just thank you for this word. Thank you for this day. And thank you for my church family, because you know I love them. Bless them all in Jesus' name and all God's people say, amen. amen.